Hello everyone, welcome to snow day four of the school year. Um, today we're going to do two short lessons, actually much shorter than we would have actually done in class. Um, we're just going to pick it up when we get back, hopefully on Tuesday. Um, so today we're going to learn about doing backwards pointed squares, um, but this time with two traits. We did them already when we were just following one trait. Um, and then we're going to learn one exception um, to Mendel's rules. Um, and that's sort of where we are now in the, le in the lessons, or sort of the exceptions to Mendel's laws. Um, all right, so let's go. All right, so just to remind you, because and because we need to know these, and they're just important. Um, and I actually would recommend, probably since you don't have the PowerPoint to write on, I actually would probably recommend taking notes on blank paper. Um, but it's up to you. The point is, at the end of this, is you need to be able to do the practice problems that were emailed. Um, so if you can do the practice problems, then you're fine. So just as a reminder, um, these are really these crosses are really really important to remember. Um, so if we if you cross two organisms that are heterozygous for one trait, you're always going to get the same thing. Okay, seventy five percent are going to show the dominant trait, and twenty five percent are going to show the recessive trait. Okay, that's important to remember. Okay, now if you cross an organism that is heterozygous for a trait with with one that is homozygous recessive. Okay, you're always going to get a 50-50 um, ratio. 50% are going to show the dominant trait, and 50% are going to show the recessive trait. Okay, those If you can memorize those, and as soon as you see that, think that, it makes the whole process of doing all these problems a whole lot easier because you don't have to draw any Punnett squares. All right, so we're going to take a look at an example. Okay, we're going to deal with plants because they're just easier. All right, and um, so in plants, um, we have red flowers are dominant over yellow flowers. And we're going to be using R um, for this trait. And then we're going to tall stems are dominant over short stems. And we're going to be using T um, for this trait. And the instructions for all these problems is that we're going to be given um, ratios of offspring or number of offspring um, that we see in each um, mating that's occurring. And our job is to predict what the genotype of the parents were that produced um, these kids. Um, so here... What this sort of is showing is you mated two plants, where you took the pollen from one plant and transferred it to the female portion of another plant. You don't know what their ge the genotypes of the parents were, okay? And you got the following offspring. Um, 300 are red and tall, 100 are red and short, um, 99 are yellow and tall, and 301 are yellow and short. So remember, what the question is asking is what possible genotypes of parents um, could produce this mating? So the first thing that you're going to do um, is add up the total offspring. Um, I, did, I did this ahead of time. So the total number of offspring here is 800. And I'm writing with the mouse, so bear with me. So the total number of offspring is 800. I just added up 300 plus 100 plus 99 plus 301. I made, I made the numbers nice. Now, to do this, we're going to treat each trait separately. We're going to find the ratios for each trait. So we're first going to look at the red and yellow trait. And we're then, then we're going to look at the tall short trait. So out of the 800 that there are, the question is, how many of them are red? So if we take a look, um, there are 400 that are red. 300 plus 100 is 400. So in that, and then there's a total of 800. So if you have 400, and let me bear with my writing with the mouse. So 400 out of 800. Okay. Whoa. Hard to write with the mouse. Okay. That's a 0.5 or 1 half ratio. So that equals 0.5, the ratio there. 0.5. Okay. And then for yellow, there are, let's see, there were also 400 of them. That is a horrible 4. There are also 400 of them, so 400 out of 800. And that's also a 0.5 ratio. Okay, and then you have to think to yourself, 0.5. Um, so you have to think to yourself, what mating produces a 50-50 ratio, and if we go back here, if we go back here, we'll see that to get the 50-50 ratio, one of the, for that trait, um, one has to be big A, little a, and the other one has to be little a, little a. So that lets us know that for the flower color trait, okay, for the cat flower color trait, one of the offspring has to be big R, little r, one of the parents, I'm sorry, one of the parents, not the offspring, and the other one, okay, the other one has to be little r, little r. Okay, because that will produce our 50-50 um, ratio that we have for color. Okay, now we're going to take a look at the tall short trait and sort of see the ratio that's there. 
All right, so we still have 800 offspring. The question is, how many are tall? Um, well, let's see, there are 300 that are tall here, so 300 that are tall here. And then there are 99 that are tall here. Um, so that's 399. Okay, over 800. Once again, hard to write with the mouse. And then we're going to look at how many that are short. Um, well, we have 100 here that are short. And we have um, 300 here that are short. Um, so that is also, we take a look here, That so that's 401, okay, um, over 800. Okay. And that's also, if you take a look, that's also close or very close um, to a 50-50 um, ratio there. So if we go back, once again, so we have another 50-50 ratio. If we go back for that, um, you can also see that that also, um, that produces, um, or if you want to get a 50-50 ratio, it's always going to be mating one that's heterozygous um, to one that's homozygous recessive. So for the, um, the height gene, one of them has to be this, okay, and the other one has to be this. Um, now, so those are just, that mating could produce those ratios um, seen. Now you could also reverse where, with which which one this went with. The little t could go with the one that's heterozygous. So it could have been this also. So each trait is independent. It could have been big r, little r, little t, little t, and then you could so like that. Like we're just putting a little t, little t with the one that's heterozygous um, for flower color times um, this. Both are possible. You only have to come up with one, um, but both are possible here. And then little r, little r. We're just changing which, which um, for each gene, which what we're putting it with. Both of those would produce um, this these percentages of offspring there. All right, so we're going to do the same thing um, with this question here. Um, so we'll bring up our um, little columns that I made. So the first thing is to add up the total offspring. If you add this up, you get 218. Okay. And we're going to look at each trait separately. So if we look at the red, yellow trait, we'll see that all of them are red. A hundred percent. So there are zero um, that are red. And then a hundred percent of them are red. So now you have to think to yourself, what matings, or what possible matings will produce only red flowers? And there actually are a lot of possibilities. Okay, so it could be big R, so we, yeah, we're using R, big R, big R, times big R, big R. Okay, that will produce only red flowers. That's a possibility, and my R is just not very good right now. But you can also have big R, big R, and that R is retarded, um, times big R, little r, that's possible. I'm like, whoa, let's go back, gotta erase. Eraser, where are you? So this has to be little r, little r. The point is that you'll never get, with that meeting, you'll never get uh, offspring that has two little r's if you do the Punnett squares. And it could also be um, big r, big r, um, times big r, little r. And in this case, you'll never get, in those three cases, you'll never get an offspring that has two little r's to make it yellow. Those are the three possibilities there. And I apologize for the writing, because at school and use the smart board to be better. Now, if we take a look at the, um, the tall, short trait here, um, we have here, if you can sort of look, it's about what? The ratio between tall and short. It's about a 50-50 ratio. So if you remember with a 50-50 ratio, okay, if we go back once again to the 50-50 ratio, whenever there's a 50-50 ratio, one of, them, one of the plants has to be heterozygous for the trait, and the other one has to be homozygous recessive for the trait. So what we're going to do is just going to fill in the spots um, with those letters. So we're using T. So one has to be heterozygous, okay, and the other one has to be homozygous recessive. Same thing here. Same thing here. Um, and the same thing here. Oh, this has to be heterozygous. So hard to type to write. There. 
So because of the 50-50 ratio that we see here, um, we know that one of the plants has to be heterozygous for tall, and the other one has to be homozygous recessive um, for short. Okay. Um, so I'm going to do this one and that one. We know, next slide. Okay. So we'll do two more, and then there are some for you to do. I think there are four for you to do by yourself. All right, so once again, here we have our offspring. Um, if we add up the total amount, 243 plus 83, um, we get 326. 300. Uh, the numbers are getting easier now. 26, I'm getting used to the mouse. Okay, now they're all short. Let's look at the short trait first, just because they're all short. And short's the recessive trait. So the question is, which mating um, can produce um, only short plants? And if you produce only short plants, um, you need them to have all little t's. So it has to be little t, little t, um, times little t, little t. That's the only mating that can produce all short plants. Makes it easier. Now, now take a look at the yellow-red trait. What ratio here is between the yellow and red? If you take a look, so the total is 336, and 83 of them, so 83 of them are yellow, so 83 are yellow, um, and that the total is 326. So if we put that in the calculator to find the ratio, um, 83 divided by 326, it's about 0 0.25. 0 0.25. So if we go back to the 0.25 situation, and when do we get that? So whenever we get a 0.25 showing the recessive trait, and the other one is going to be 75% showing the dominant trait, um, it's always crossing two heterozygous together. Um, so that means for the, uh, for the, for the um, flower color trait, these have to be heterozygous. So like that. Little r. And like that. That's the only possible mating that will produce um, that, off that, that amount of offspring. Okay. Now for the last one, which if you can remember something, it's actually pretty easy, um, but otherwise it's more work. So remember the first step, and we'll actually, you know, um, the first step um, is to add up um, all the offspring. So 112 plus 38 plus 37 plus 13 is 200. Ah, it's a nice, neat number. Okay, 200. Okay. And we're going to look at the red trait first. So if we add up the total letter red, so look at red, R, the total letter red, R 112 plus 38, which is 150. Okay, now 150, if you do 150 divided by 200, my 200 is horrible, so 150 um, divided by 200. That's 0.75, and whenever we get that 0.75 case, we know that they both have to be heterozygous to get that 75% dominant, 25% um, recessive. So it's going to be big R, little r, times big R, little r. Okay, we're going to do the same thing um, for the tall short. Let's look at the tall ones. Okay, we see that 120, I'm sorry, 112 are tall. Okay. And 37, um, the other 37 here, they're also tall. Okay, and that gives us 149. Okay, 149 out of 200. That is also, if you did the math, about a point two, uh, point seven five of them are going to show the dominant trait. If you did the division, you get point seven five. Whenever you get that point near point seven five um, for the dominant trait, that means they both have to be heterozygous. So here we go. And that is the only mating um, that will produce um, the ratios that are shown here. Now, if you look carefully here, um, this is that 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 ratio um, that you'll see, uh, that we see when we cross two heterozygous. You'll see that here's the threes. Like, they're very close. They, they're one away. This is the 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 ratio. It's very close to that. Um, it's never exact. Um, but if you see that, if you see that two of them are really close together, um, and that one is showing the dominant trait, and one is showing the recessive trait, and then for the other one, the dominant and the recessive trait. Usually, that's you'll see that 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 ratio. Um, all right.